Chair Barker, members of the committee, thank you for having us here today. My name is Joshua Shulman. Uh, I'm a lawyer in Portland. Um, I'm a personal injury lawyer, so people come to me when they've been hit by someone or when their loved one has been hit and killed by someone. And uh, I have three points I want to make here today. The first one is that leaving the scene is a whole separate thing from hitting the person, and it causes separate injuries. So first there's the hit, and that's, that's an accident. But then leaving is a choice. It's an intentional act. And it causes separate injuries. It causes more physical injuries, as Steph talked about. There's this, if someone's hit and they're seriously hurt, and then the person who hit them leaves instead of calling 911, that can mean the difference between a serious injury and death or between organ damage and organ failure. Um, but the second kind of injury is there's a psychological injury. And it's one thing to be hit and have a, a broken pelvis or you know, whatever serious injury it is, maybe be in a wheelchair for life. That's hard enough to deal with. When you also now know that there are people out there who are evil enough, selfish enough to do that and then leave you lying in the road like a piece of garbage, that is something people don't get over. It causes a separate psychological injury. Um, so that's point one. It's, the hit is usually an accident, but the leaving is intentional. Thank you. And it causes separate injuries. Number two is people run for a reason. In my experience, the people who flee the scene usually are drunk or they're on drugs or they have a suspended license. Maybe they have prior DUIs. And the situation with the law right now is that um, if these people were to call a criminal defense lawyer, if they were to hit someone and call a criminal defense lawyer and say, hey, I want to do as little jail time as possible, what should I do? Often the right advice is you should flee. You should turn yourself in tomorrow when they won't be able to find your alcohol level, level when they won't be able to prove you were drinking. And what happens is that it's really hard for the prosecutor even to prove they were driving. Right? Maybe someone gets a license plate so you know whose car it was, but that does not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that person was driving. So they're in a tough plea bargain situation. Um, it's tough to prove they were driving and you can't really prove they were drinking. So the more we can increase penalties, the more the prosecutor can have something on their side to plea bargain on the other side of that difficulty. Um, the third thing, and this is kind of a, the, about the, how we look at driving. Everyone seems to think that driving is a, some kind of right that we have, and it's not. It's a privilege. If you want a driver's license in Oregon, you have to go to the DMV, you have to take a test, and you have to pass it. Um, and once you've done that, the state of Oregon says, we're backing you. You can drive. Here. Here's a driver's license from us. If you then hit someone and cause what this bill is serious injury is, is defined as like near death, organ failure, permanent disfigurement. These are very serious injuries. If you hit someone and cause that kind of injury and take off, right now the state of Oregon is gonna say one year later, here's your license back. We think you should drive again. So in my view, um, if you cause serious personal injury, I'd like to see the license taken away for way more than three years. But three years is a great step in the right direction. And um, I fully support this bill, and I hope that you will too. Thank you. Thank you.